Good morning, everyone. We praise God for this day, and I want to thank the band for opening up for us today. And Judah is going to be joining us right after the message. We're continuing on with our series, The Lord is Coming. And we've been preaching and teaching from 2 Timothy, the third chapter, beginning with verse one. And it says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. And we spent two weeks on that portion. Our focus today is that men will be unthankful. People, the world will be unthankful. I've been operating also from uh, a particular clock and on every hour and even between the hours, I've put a sticker on the hour. And Valerie, if you could get that clock for me there, thank you so much for your help today. I want to be consistent with that and um, show the folks out there where we are because if you're like me, you need some visuals to help you and you're learning, and that's just the teacher in me also. So men will become unthankful. And as I said before, if you notice this clock and how it's being filled up with so many ungodly things, but it's indicative of the times that we're now living in. All right, before we unpack this word of unthankful, I want to first look at the word that's translated thankful in the Greek. It's Christosis, Christosis, that's thankful in the Greek. And it, it's a derivative of the word charis, mean, which means grace, grace. So when charostus is transformed from charis, it basically speaks of an individual that is full that person is thankful, that person has gratitude, and that person is appreciative. Now, when I speak of thankful, I want to be clear about that. That's basically saying that this individual is not simply thankful to a person, but for something. Um, the seniors that I grew up around used to say, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. Just grateful for the day. Well, then, grateful then is, well, God, you're the one who allowed me to see this day. And without you, <laughs> I would not have been able to experience this day. Appreciation or being appreciative takes it further. I'm thankful for this day that God has allowed me to see. And now I want to lift my hands in appreciation. I want to lift up my voice in appreciation 
for what God has done. Now, if you need further pictures of how that all plays, what came to my mind is David's cup running over. David's cup running over at the table in the presence of his enemies. That's Charistos. David saying, God, or David just saying, I'm thankful just to be able to rise in the morning. And then I'm grateful that God has chosen me. God anointed me. And then finally, in appreciation, Lord, you are my shepherd, and I exalt you. That's Charistos. And I wonder if you are Charistos today, if your heart, your soul, your spirit is filled with thankfulness. Are you grateful? <laughs> Are you appreciative for what the Lord has done in your life? Now, the Apostle Paul says that the time would come where men would no longer sing amazing grace. They would no longer Sing that phrase that through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. Twas grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me on. It's unbelievable, but it's happening. I tell you, for over 10 years, I volunteered in teaching music at a high school. And when the young people volunteered or auditioned to sing in the choir, I was absolutely amazed by the fact that when I asked them to sing a song, they didn't know any Christian songs. They didn't know even Yes, Jesus Loves Me. So what I ran across, Pastor, was a number of children who were not thankful, who were not grateful, and didn't know how to show appreciation to all of the benefits that they had. And that's what Paul is saying. The time would come where we would witness these things. So what is unthankfulness in the Greek? It shudders me to even tell you. So we have charistos, thankful in the Greek. And so then unthankful would be a charistos. You see, when you put an A in front of charistos, it cancels out the entire <laughs> meaning. And so what you then have is a person who is unthankful, ungrateful, unappreciative of what God has done. Unthankful, unthoughtful. <laughs> There's no gratitude towards God at all for what has been given. And there is no sign of appreciation. Okay, so getting back to our example here, where you have David's cup that's just running over. The opposite of that then would be Saul's cup. That's empty, dirty on the inside. I would even say filled with flies. 
Okay, so now what would that look like uh, live and in living color? <laughs> Permit me to create a scenario for you. So let's say you have a person who is thankful for all that has happened, grateful, appreciative, and they get up in the morning praising God for it all. They get ready to go to work to work this long shift, 10, 12 hours. They leave, and when they leave the house, they have left behind an able-bodied individual who's still sleeping. <laughs> uh, let me slow down for a moment here. This unthankful person basically sums up a person that feels like they are entitled. Do you know what that is? Robert Porter describes the entitled person as one who has unrealistic, unmerited, inappropriate expectations for this favorable living and favorable treatment at the hands of others. Let me say that again. He describes it as this individual that has unrealistic, unmerited, inappropriate expectations of favorable living conditions and favorable treatment at the hands of others. So let me go back to this scenario that I'm creating. So you have this person that's filled and just running over with gratitude and appreciation and thankfulness for what God has done, has left at home this individual that fits this entitlement. And they open their eyes, and rather than being thankful for a roof over their head and shelter and food, they go on back to sleep. Don't, <laughs> don't thank God for it. They get up eventually sometime in the afternoon, uh, make a meal, make a mess in the kitchen all over the house. <laughs> Go and play with games and just have a good old time while the person is away. And never think to show again God thanks for what he has done in helping that person who's providing all of these benefits or showing appreciation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Showing appreciation by what? Just washing a cup, picking up socks, vacuuming a floor, doing something, never do anything. And then the one who's paying rent, the one who, who's paying mortgage, the one who goes out to work comes home and pulls in the driveway and sits in the driveway readying themselves for what they're about to witness once they walk in that door. Because in knowing that this person has an entitlement mindset, they know when they turn that key, they're going to experience flames and fire that even the Hebrew boys never experienced. Because if they question or bring about even constructive criticism to this person with an entitled mindset, they know that they are going to be met with this shameless, 
unrealistic, unmerited, inappropriate behavior. And so after there's this huge confrontation and this individual who sat at home begins to um, pull out this laundry list of that person's faults and failures and on and on and on, just ridiculous. That, that individual goes to bed, retires to bed, just completely, absolutely worn out with the theme going through their mind over and over again, which is the title of a book by Sandy Hotchkiss, which is entitled, Why Is It Always About You? Why is it all about, why is it always all about you? And the more I give, the more you take. The more I give, the less you appreciate. The person with an entitlement mindset has this thought, it's, it's me, 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 me. My definition of them would be, you owe me because I'm special. And that's the world that we're living in right now. We have individuals who have this mindset that they're owed something simply because they exist. Now, Erica, that is a hard individual to deal with. And as I've created this situation, some of you are at home and your spirit is just churning and you're saying, Pastor P, I know what you're talking about and I'm, I'm dealing with this kind of person and and what do I do? What do I do? I feel you because I know you're somewhere in between wanting to sing, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me, under, let me stand. And on the other side, there's the flesh pulling you that you want to put your fist through a wall. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't. Don't do that. Well, what do we do? Let's look at scripture. Let's hear Jesus on the matter. Jesus says something really, really interesting. And Valerie, you know, I thank God for you in your prayer. You actually prayed this. Luke 6 and 35. And put your seatbelts on this. Just brace yourself. But it's good word for you. Jesus says, but love your enemies. <laughs> when you got a person who's around you with an entitlement mindset and they're constantly unthankful and there's no gratitude or appreciation and and you're battling with them sometimes they can feel like the enemy Jesus says this love your enemies do good are you still here and lend lend hoping for nothing in return. Now I'm starting to hear grunts and groans. <laughs> and your reward will be great. And here it is. And you will be sons of the Most High. For and look at this, circle this in your Bibles, underline it, highlight it, highlight it in your mind, go over it 
day after day after day. You prayed this, Valerie. And this is my God. This is my Jesus. And this is how he wants us to walk. How, Pastor? For he is kind. To who? The unthankful and evil. He lets the sun shine on the just and the unjust. Therefore, be merciful. And I know you're thinking in your mind and you have thought, this person deserves the worst rebuke. Mercy is withholding from them what they deserve. And you know what? That's exactly what God has done for us over and over and over and over again. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. So Jesus says again, what? Love them? Be kind to them? For God <laughs> is kind to the thankful, to those who have it all together. He's also kind to the unthankful and evil. He wants us to be merciful. All right. I see you twitching. I hear you grunting and groaning. <laughs> Saying, I ain't Jesus. <laughs> I got another passage for you. Colossians. 3 and 15. You say you have Jesus in you. You say you have the spirit in you. Well, now, as sons and daughters of God, we've got to let that shine, right? And in the most difficult places, Colossians 3 and 15. Well, let me start at verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on woo, tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness. You know, this mindset of entitlement has a goal for you to pull off your Christianity. Lay down your religion. Jesus said, no, you're not going to lay down anything. You're going to put on some things. Put on humility. Put on kindness. Put on mercies. Put on long-suffering. Bearing with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also and here it is but above all these things put on love which is the bond of perfection and the most important thing that I want to leave you with and let the peace of God the shalom of God rule in your heart. In other words, allow the Holy Spirit to direct your actions, direct your tongue, direct your speech. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. I'm not finished with you yet. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5 and 18. And then I'll call Judah up. First Thessalonians 5, 18. As a matter of fact, you all can get ready to come up now. It 
It says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I like the next part of it is don't quench the spirit. So for this day, God, I, I thank you. I'm grateful for one more day. Lord, you gave it to me. And you've opened up the windows of heaven time and time again. And you've poured out blessings that I don't have room enough to receive. And today, I want to honor you. We want to honor you and show our appreciation for all that you have done. God, thank you for your word. Thank you, yes, for the power of your spirit. And the way that I want to show my appreciation to you, God, is I want to, as tough as this word that has been brought forth, I want to live that out for you. Because <laughs> I remember, and I'm thankful for the cross. Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. And I'm so grateful. <laughs> That you rose for me. Mm. And I appreciate the fact that you didn't just go on back to glory. <laughs> but you left something for me. The Holy Spirit to guide me and to teach me. To lead me. Show me a better way of life. And in appreciation, Jesus, I want to live that out. So even of the ill feelings that I have right now and the anger towards individuals that have wronged me, I thank you. <laughs> I'm grateful <laughs> that I can leave it at the cross. <laughs> and your power is in me. Your dunamis power to rise above the situation and be on my love base. You get it? And I could go on and on and on and on. But we bless the Lord today. We give him glory. The sign of your glory is where